Hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you all how easy it is to get homebrew up and running on your Nintendo Wii. Now I'm gonna break the video down into four parts basically, which is installing the homebrew channel. Then we're gonna be doing boot me and preloader as well as a NAND dump, that way you have some proper brick protection. Uh, we're gonna do the CIOS installer because if you, you're gonna pretty much need to do that if you ever wanna use games from a USB flash drive, USB hard drive. And then lastly, we'll cover the Homebrew browser, which is an application that you can use to install other Homebrew applications like emulators, for example. That way you don't have to manually structure everything on your SD card. But uh, let's just get started. Okay, so the first step is to start up the Wii because there's some information that we're going to need from it. So the first thing while we're on the main menu is to check and make sure that your date and time is currently correct. Uh, the letter bomb hack that we're going to be using today will not work if this is not correct. After that, we're going to go into this Wii options icon. Then we're going to go into Wii settings. And now we're going to want to make note of our version number. I'm on version 4.3U. This also works for European consoles, Japanese consoles, and Korean consoles. Um, we're going to go over to, if you're not on 4.3, you can update your console to 4.3 if you connect to the internet, I believe. Uh, let's go to the right and we're going to go into internet and we're going to go into connection settings. So you want to make sure that your console is connected to the internet. You're going to need this for when we use the homebrew browser, that way you can get on their servers. Uh, other than that, you can skip that step if you don't have uh, a wireless option. So press B. And next, we're going to go into console information. Now, if we click this, your Mac address will be displayed. You can see I have mine blurred out. You're going to want to make note of this because we're going to need this later when we're on the computer. So I'm just going to hit back. And that's pretty much it, honestly, for what we need from here for now. So let's go ahead and head back over to the PC. All right. So one thing before we continue on with this, I want to explain more about the SD card. So ideally, if it was me, you should have at least an eight gigabyte card, although you can get away with going with lower. Uh, I'm using a 32 gigabyte card today, but you want to make sure that it's formatted to FAT32. To do that, right click, go to format, and you see you have your option for file system FAT32. You can name it and then just hit start. I already did mine, so I'm not going to do it here. And now we can continue on with this. All right, now that we're on PC, you're going to see I have four tabs open up top. I'll leave a link in the description for everything that I'm using here today. But to start things off, we have Letterbomb. This is what's going to install the homebrew channel and boot me onto our system. Now, the first thing you're going to see is system menu version. We're going to select version 4.3U because that is my version. And then you're going to type in your Mac address. So just give me one second. Once your Mac address is entered, you're going to want to make sure that the bundle, the hack me installer is checked. And then you're going to want to click cut the red wire or cut the blue wire. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to cut the blue wire. After we have that downloaded, we're going to go over to the next tab, which is preloader. And we're using the Wii hack guide for all of our downloads here today. So I'm just going to go to preloader installer and click this. Now we have that. The next tab is the CIOS installer, and we're going to grab this D2X CIOS installer. And we're going to scroll down a little bit and grab the NUS downloader as well. After that, one more tab and we have the open shop channel, otherwise known as the homebrew browser. All we have to do is just click this homebrew browser link here and we're all set with our downloads. So let me go ahead and open this up in some folders and we'll start structuring everything. So to start off, let's go ahead and highlight all of our zip files here. We're going to do right click and go to extract each archive to separate folder. Once that's done, you can delete the zips. And now we have all the files that we need. So we're going to start with Letterbomb. Open this up. And out of all these, you only need two files, the boot.elf and the private folder. So you can drag these over to the root of your SD card. Uh, everything else here, though, is a text file with the like boot me, for example. There's instructions on how to use it in here. So you can read these and keep these if you want. It's just they're not needed on the SD card. So let's go back into our downloads and we're going to go with the D2 CIOS installer. Now you're going to see this is in an apps folder. Since we don't have an apps folder on our SD card already, we're just going to drag this apps folder straight onto the SD card. But if we open it up, you're going to see we have the D2 CIOS installer inside 
And if we open that up, you're going to see it has the boot.dol file, and this is what starts it. So go back. We're going to keep it here inside of the apps folder, because if we go back to our downloads, the homebrew browser is also an application. So if we open that, there's another folder. There's another homebrew browser folder. And you know you have the right one once you reach the boot.dol. So just go back and drag this homebrew browser straight onto the applications folder. Head back over to the downloads again. And what else do we have? We have preloader. Let's open this, open the apps folder. We have preloader and again, the .dol is in here. So we drag preloader folder right over into the apps folder. Now we're gonna return to the root of our SD card and we're gonna go back to our downloads. And the last thing to do is mess with the uh, NUS downloader. So let's open this up and launch the EXE. Now the NUS downloader is needed for the CIOS installer. We're gonna be grabbing pretty much four WAD files that we're gonna be needing. So to start off, let's go to database, go to iOS. We're gonna go to iOS 38. And then we're gonna grab version 4123. From here, go to package wad and just check this box here and make sure your settings look like mine. And then just go to start NUS download. Once it's done, all you have to do is just clear it because we're gonna do this three more times. So once again, go to database, iOS. This time we're gonna be selecting iOS 56. We're gonna go to version 5661 and then hit start NUS download. Once again, we're gonna clear this box, go to database, iOS. This time we're gonna to go to iOS 57 and we're gonna grab version 5918 and then hit start NUS download. And one more time, just hit database, iOS. We're gonna to go to iOS 58 and we're gonna select version 6175 and then hit start NUS download again. Once that's done, we can just close out of the application but back in the uh, folder for the NUS downloader, you're gonna see we have a titles folder. Let's open this up. And these are gonna be our four wads that we're gonna be throwing on the root of our SD card. So if we open up this first folder and then the next one, you're gonna get all this, but you're gonna notice you have a .wad file. We only need this file. So drag this right on the root of your SD. And we're gonna do that with all the other titles as well. So just open them up, find the wad file, throw them on the root of your SD and once again for the third one. And then lastly for the fourth one. And that's pretty much it for our SD card file structure. Now we can take the SD card out, head back over the Wii and start installing all this stuff. All right, back on the Wii. So the first thing we're gonna do is start the letter bomb hack. And to do that, we're gonna open up our message board. And if you don't see it on today's date, you can either go forward one day or backwards one day and you can see I have it here now. Another thing you can do is open up the calendar and it'll show you what date you have a message on. If I click that, it'll be back at the letter bomb. So if I just hit A on this, this will initiate the hack. So just give this a second to load up and we're gonna get to this warning screen that basically tells you if you paid for the software, you've been scammed, but uh, they actually make you read it so you need to wait about 30 seconds before we can continue. Now, once the option is available for you, just hit one to continue. And I also will say if you've had trouble booting into this and just launching the letter bomb hack in general, it could be that you selected the wrong system version at the start when we were on the letter bomb site. So you may want to check that if your system's freezing whenever you open up the letter. But anyways, on this screen, you're going to see we have two options, the homebrew channel and boot me. And hopefully for you, it says can be installed like it does for me. So I'm going to press A to continue. And the first thing we're gonna do is go up and select install the homebrew channel. And we're gonna to go to yes, continue. And it's pretty fast and success continue. So let's just hit A on that. And now we're gonna go into boot me. Now boot me gives you an extra layer of brick protection. We're gonna install this as boot two, which is really good for brick protection because it's basically the boot two on the device. But if you're unable to do this, that means you have a Wii that was probably made after 2008, I believe, when the patch was made, where Boot 2 is no longer pretty much allowed on those consoles, been patched. So you can also do Boot Me as iOS. We're actually going to be installing both. I'm going to go here, press yes to continue, press yes to continue, and give this a second to load. And it's going to say success and continue again. 
and now we're gonna install BootMe as iOS. Now, if you can't do the first option, you do lose that layer of brick protection, but if you install it as an iOS, you're able to access BootMe from the Homebrew channel. And if you do that, you're able to make a NAND dump. So you're not totally in the dark here. So press A on this and go yes to continue. And then yes to continue again. And same thing. Oh, no, actually this was pretty fast. Success continue, press OK. And we're pretty much done with this. So let's go to return to the main menu and hit exit. Now when it exits, it should take us to the homebrew channel. And it did. And you can see those three applications that we were talking about earlier, the CIOS installer, the homebrew browser, and preloader. The first thing we're gonna do when we're on here is launch preloader. So this is another layer of brick protection you can get. Preloader is an app that replaces the first part of the system menu that gets booted. This allows it to load before the actual Wii menu. So hit A to load on this, and it's gonna give you a little warning message that they have you read. And when the option appears, you have plus to install, or a minus to remove, we're gonna do plus to install. This is also pretty quick. And it's done, so press A to exit back to loader. And now that it's installed, we need to configure the preloader settings. So let's go ahead and turn off our Wii. And when we do that, we wanna turn the Wii back on, but we need to hold the reset button the entire time while we power the console on. Just give it a moment to turn on and it should take us to the preloader menu. And there it is. So now you can see we have a bunch of options here. We wanna just go down into system menu hacks and press A on this. And this allows you to enable a bunch of cool things for your devices like block disk updates, block online updates, which we both want enabled. Uh, you have other options here that you can go through and select at your leisure, but uh, the main ones we're gonna be doing here today are the ones I just did. And uh, let's do region free everything. And that's pretty much good for me for now. So I'm gonna scroll down and go to save settings and then press B to go back. And honestly, that's pretty much it for setting up preloader. So if we go back up, we can go to homebrew channel. So that'll boot us right back to where we were. Now, once we're in here, if we hit the home button, we have our option to launch into boot me. We're gonna do that and we're gonna perform a NAND dump on our console. This is important because uh, if you ever like install the wrong theme for your console, like it was the wrong region or something, you can use your NAND dump to restore your Wii back to what it was before you messed it up. So a NAND dump is very important. I definitely recommend that you do it and don't skip this step. I believe you need only about 512 megabytes of space for the NAND dump, but obviously a bigger SD card is better. But now that we're on boot me, you're gonna notice that the Wii remote no longer works and that we have to navigate with the console buttons. So if we hit the power button, that is how we just move around. And if we hit the reset button, that's how you choose your selection. So we're gonna navigate over to the gears here and hit the reset button. And we're gonna go with this first option with the green SD that is back up me, which is our NAND device. So what it's gonna do right now is just perform the NAND dump. And then when it's all done, it's gonna verify it. So it's gonna take anywhere between 10 to 20 minutes. So I will skip to when it's done. But before we go, I do wanna say that you're probably gonna notice you have a couple of bad blocks during that. If you see that, it's usually not a problem. I'm probably going to have a few during mine as well. But uh, let me go ahead and just skip to the end of this. And when it's done, it's gonna say verify succeeded, hit any button to exit, but you're gonna notice that nothing works on the Wiimote. You're gonna to have to hit the reset button on the Wii again. This will take us back into boot me. And if you use the power button again, we can go all the way to the right, select this icon to go back. And we can launch either into the Wii menu or the homebrew channel, which we want to go back into the homebrew channel. So let's go ahead and hit the reset button on that. All right, now that all the brick protection stuff is out of the way, we can go ahead and do the CIOS installer. Now, once again, the CIOS installer is for if you want to use a USB hard drive, USB flash drive to play games off of them. You'll need to run most of these in order to get certain games running. So let's open this up and go to load. Once you're on this page, it'll say press any button to continue. I'm just going to hit the A button. And now we need to make all of our settings here. So with the first option where it says select CIOS, we're gonna go over into the right and do D2X V11 beta one. Then we're gonna scroll down to CIOS base and select 38. And then for the CIOS slot, we're gonna do 248. And then the last one, CIOS revision, we're gonna go over to the right till we find 65535. After you found these, just go ahead and press A Press A one more time, and this is gonna install it to the console. So just give this a moment to run through. Once it's done, it's gonna bring us back to this menu. We just gotta hit A to continue, 
and we need to do this three more times. So we're gonna keep the first option the same, but we're gonna select the base and switch it over to 56 and the CIOS slot to 249. Everything else will stay the same. So press A to continue, A to continue again, and once again, let this run through. All right, two more times, just hit A to continue. And for the base, we're gonna go up one and do 57. And for the slot, we're gonna go up one and do 250. Press A to continue and press A once again. And one more time, let it continue. All right, last one, A to continue. And for the base, we're gonna select 58. And the slot, we're gonna do 251. Press A to continue and A to start. And once that last one's finished, we can go ahead and hit A to continue, but we're all done with the CIOS installer. So we can hit the B button, which will make us exit and return to the homebrew channel. Now, the last application we have to use here is the homebrew browser. And again, your console needs to be connected to the internet in order to get this to load. But uh, once it gets in here, it's gonna wait for the network to initialize, which does sometimes take some time. So give it about 30 seconds or so. Now, once we're in here, the first thing you're gonna see is all these homebrew games that you can install. Now there's multiple tabs in here for like utilities, for example, which have WAD managers. And there's a bunch of things like for theme installers, We Earth, which actually sounds pretty cool. I'm gonna download that. Just press A when you want something and then press A to download and it should do it pretty fast. So just press B and just like that, it's that fast. Uh, we can also scroll over into emulators and there's a bunch on here. Like this one's Game Boy Advance, this one's PlayStation 1. Uh, NES, Super Nintendo, uh, Nintendo 64, Sega Genesis, they have a DOSBox emulator, Atari, so there's a bunch on here that you can just click and grab. Uh, that's pretty much it for the homebrew browser. What I want to do now is just hit the home button if we want to return, and you have an option to either reboot your Wii or return to loader. We can go ahead and just return to the loader. Now we're pretty much all set with what we have to do on the Wii. We just wanna head back over to the PC one more time to make some final adjustments to our SD card and we should be all set to wrap the video up. Okay, so the final thing to start wrapping this video up, you might've noticed already when you restart your console that it automatically boots into boot me. If you want that to stop, all you have to do is rename the boot me file. Like you can do pretty much anything, but I'll do let's say underscore disable. And we can just leave it like that and that'll stop boot me from launching every single time you turn on your Wii. Uh, the next thing that you want to do is take your keys.bin and your nan.bin. This is from your nan dump that you did earlier and we're going to want to copy these to somewhere safe on our PC to just hold on to these for safekeeping. Um, but that's pretty much it. Once these are transferred you're pretty much all set to go and start on your homebrew adventure. Now you might be wondering what's next? What can I do next? I have tons of other videos on my channels to recommend, like this one for emulation, or this one for installing other wads. So go ahead and give those a watch, and I will see you guys in the next video. Adios.